Social media can be used to promote more traditional campaign events, okay? I remember when I first started with viral marketing and online marketing became a big thing that there was this move within the marketing industry or probably within society as well that if you go online now and you do your marketing online, then you're online, okay? Everything's online now, you don't have to worry about the more traditional forms of media because everybody now will engage with you online and that's where your marketing is going to be, okay? I don't believe that's true and I, in a theoretical sense, I don't believe from my experience with this campaign that it's true in a practical sense either. Uh, social media can be used to promote more traditional for, uh, campaign events. These events will provide you with content for the social media, so it's a kind of circular process, and it also gives you an opportunity to push people onto the online platform. Okay? So use, use of both builds up a circle of activity that stimulate each other. Um, the first, of Mar the first March that we had on the 2nd of January, we generated a crowd outside the factory of 600 people uh, simply by using the Facebook events invitation function, okay? 600 people on the first Bank of Holiday Monday after Christmas in the freezing cold. Simply all through Facebook event invitation, okay? Um, and offline, we engaged them once. Okay, so here's the relationship. While offline campaign techniques will engage members of your audience once, if you get them onto Facebook and Twitter, you can reinforce the message again and again. And what better way to get them to join online by asking them face to face? If you're on a crowd with them, you can say, look, we have a Facebook page, you need to get online so that you can follow this more in depth. And that's what we did. We actively went out into the crowd, myself and Veronica, when people were there, went, get on Facebook, get on Twitter, here's the handles, here's the address. And we were able to push the people from the more traditional forms of campaigning onto the online platforms, okay? Uh, and we turned everything, we literally turned everything that was happening into an event, okay? Even when they went on uh, the Late Late Show, they went on the week on the Late Late Show, okay? We ripped up their appearance on the Late Late Show online um, throughout the course of the day. We did a countdown to them being on the Late Late Show and we ripped up a bit of a frenzy about it. And while they were on the Late Late Show, we provided commentary on their appearance <coughs> through Twitter and Facebook while they were actually speaking online. Okay, so a complete, um, rather than being antagonistic, the general point I want to make here is that if you're running a social media campaign, don't make the mistake of putting all your eggs in one basket, alright? There has to be a balance between traditional forms of campaigning and the social media in order to create this circle of activity that will essentially stimulate each other, okay? And um, what do we do in terms of offline stuff? Marches, um, vigils, we had a candlelight vigil with John Splam playing in the, the factory car park, okay? Concerts, Christy Morse, a solo concert in support of the workers. Uh, we even had masses that we tweeted about, uh, had status updates about, and up to date videos. Somebody would sing a song or uh, a hymn at the mass, we'd video it. Within three minutes of the person finishing the song, it will be up on the Facebook page, okay? Uh, we actively, we, the main march that we held, that we did the promotion for, attracted 5,500 people in the centre of Park City on February the 14th, okay? I think it was the 11th. Uh, we, that once it started to lose its new value, and the press lost interest, then the workers would lose their ability to communicate with the public. So we laid it down to then have a very start going, we need to cooperate, we cooperate with GDP, we cooperate with us, alright? And that you must understand that it's a campaign and the workers are going to be the people who determine the way this is going to be communicated, okay? So rather than saying, oh, well we have a captive audience at this point of about 8,000 people, the journalists at some level knew that we could continue communicating with the public group them. So there will be an initial, you could have had a knee jerk reaction where you could have got the journalists, you know what, we can do this ourselves without you. Uh, social media, this is an example of social media now transplanting the, the traditional forms of media so you can get lost, right? We can do this ourselves. But rather than doing that, that would be foolish because these traditional forms of media already have a captive audience. They have a loyal captive audience and we said no. Okay? We can tap into that audience as well. So we developed a constructive relationship with journalists and the media, right? 
and it was a trade-off, right? We actually had a situation, right, develop where I was getting phone calls from journalists from RT to FM, even Echo, Irish Times, uh, even the Guardian in London, okay? asking me, Darren, why aren't you, why is your campaign not covering our coverage of your campaign? Think about that for a minute, right? Why is your campaign not covering our coverage of your campaign? We had them like that, okay? Sorry, I don't, I don't there's probably no journalists here, but uh, we had them, we, we knew we had them, okay? So we made a trade off of that. You keep covering it from the angle that we're giving you, and we'll give you links, okay? We'll give you links. Because they know that the market their publications as well. Journalists have moved away from being just news reporters, they are now marketers for their publications as well, okay? So we sit down, right? We cover it, we make sure that the lack, from our perspective, that an accurate story is coming out of this, and then and if you bring an article that goes up online, we make sure that we treat the link and we promote the status. So this has to be a cooperation. And we developed a very good understanding with some of the journalists on the other edge. Uh, so online campaign, the Eden Echo, Irish Examiner, the Times, Lady Six FM, Two FM, RT, all the major players. We had a very good relationship, and most of it coming from me standing outside the canteen in a very rocky area on the phone talking to them, okay? Uh, embrace co-creation, all right? There's no reason in the world why you can't you can never get to know the people that are following on, on Facebook or on Twitter, all right? Even if it isn't possible in an individual sense, it isn't the sense of getting to know them as a group or their shared collective identity and values, all right? Um, foster dialogue, not monologue, all right? Uh, this avoids our campaign turning into a notice for form type function. This is what, uh, you know, this kind of this is what we have to say, this is what we are doing, so you can take it or leave it, all right? That kind of monologue approach things. Uh, social media gives you the opportunity to reach different levels of engagement, so we should seize that opportunity, all right? Uh, it will be the one thing that uh, helps the most in fostering a real community around your campaign, and that is what you want with a social issue, all right? For a social issue, you have to use the social media to foster the idea, the values, the architecture of a traditional community, but doing that in an online forum, all right? Um, we are we have people coming into the factory saying, Oh, I was chatting to you on Facebook last night and I thought I'd call over today with some dinner. Okay? So people were chatting to us on Facebook the night before and then calling in with a, a baked dinner the next day into the canteen, right? And no, this is a bit of a cliche, right? Um, and I don't want this to start sounding like one of those self-help self -help style business books that people buy when they're waiting for their flight in airports and they buy them to read on book or, or to read on the plane. Very much uh, have to drum this home to you. Uh, don't, no matter how small you be your campaign is, don't be afraid to be creative, alright? Um, I really believe this. It was a like, don't rule out anything uh, mentality which provided uh, the key factor in driving the success of this campaign. Uh, it was the social media campaign, people behind the social media campaign made the decision to put them on the Late Late Show uh, because at the, that stage it was a very localised issue. Uh, so we said, alright, we need to get these guys on the Late Late, put them on Ireland stage, put it, um, and when they appeared on the Late Late, late, late Show, they put them into the national consciousness and their issue never left it after there, okay? I'm not a big fan of the content of the Late Late Show, by the way, alright? But I did acknowledge that on a Friday night at half nine, if you get somebody on the Late Late Show, they're more or less being, being, being them into a lot of different rooms around the country, okay? Uh, when they were going up on the train, I rang Henry O'Reilly, one of the workers, and I said, when you go on there tonight, you make sure that you mention that you have a Facebook page and you have a Twitter account, okay? I texted him five times before he went into RT Studios and I said, if you don't mention that tonight, when you come back down, myself and Veronica will be gone. He, we turn off the phones and we weren't there. So, so I was watching, <laughs> watching the interview going, say something with you. So eventually towards the end, Ryan Tuberty was trying to wrap up the segment, as Tuberty tries to do, all right? And Henry already came out and over and he went, all right, by the way, we just want to say that we have a Facebook page, 
and we have a Twitter account. And I had enough talk open at the time as he was speaking within an hour after he had said it. 1,200 people. I, had, I could actually see the links as they were talking up on the Facebook page, okay? Question? Yeah. Um, Even though I don't know if this is the format of one. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, do you think the, the people who watch the Late Late Show, the, 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 the market segment, and then run Facebook within an hour? Yeah, well, that's the empirical evidence I have. Oh, yeah, no, Unfortunately. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, the market segment, segment that was watching Facebook, or that's looking at the day age, I think the age, sorry, you don't know, the age profile of these workers, most of them in their 50s, some of them in their 60s, yeah. very much the demographic of people watching the day show. Alright? And, and I'm not saying that it was necessarily those people, but they could have had teenage kids there, yeah. or people in the room with them going, can you get onto this thing and tell me a bit more about it, okay? Yeah. And causation, very hard to prove, obviously, alright? I'm just saying that there was a correlation in my experience with looking at it, alright? It was happening in the front here and going on, alright? There was nothing else going on, I thought I could attribute it, alright? And so, and I want to talk about the whole idea of something being viral, alright? Or something being viral, or whatever reputation you want to give it, right? Sometimes, that was okay at the start. Remember when we were being younger, we always got viral American videos of our emails. How about we share it? How about we forward it? And then it started getting cheesy because things just stopped being funny, okay? Sometimes you have to give the German nudge, alright? You have to give it a push, alright? And that's what we did by putting them on the late late show. So we thought it was any box on the stuff, alright? And so that brings me to the next point about giving the German push. And we saw an endorsement, okay? We had Noam Chomsky, Killian Murphy, Alex Ferguson, Christy Moore, and I said the Lady HO, Mary Robinson, Paul McGrath, and Dead Bishop. And how we did this was that we actually contacted them, okay? At the time there was a misconception that both Killian Murphy and Hollywood has heard about the field projects workers, and he's lending them the support. We contacted the New York agents in LA and said, Look, we're from Park, this is going on in Park at the moment. We just drove the water from them, giant thing that you can do. And we got a letter. Within two days, we had a letter back to the New York saying that they had Google, searched the out on Google News, said, Yes, look, this is something that we can do. Noam Chomsky, uh, a very funny situation, Noam Chomsky, uh, emailed Noam Chomsky to his MIT account. And this is probably at the point where we were the lowest in the campaign because we weren't seeing a break from coming. And I remember laying in my bed at about 3 o'clock in the morning and the phone rattled on my bedside locker. And I was thinking, oh my god, one of the lads is how rock and he doesn't know how to get out or he wants me to come in or something like that or someone's like breaking up with somebody or I don't know what it is. And I looked at like 3 o'clock in the and up on the screen, you know, I'm to see. I was like, what? I clicked in, there, Darren. Big long letter of support for the new department's work in Park. The point I think the main here is that all, this, all these um, celebrity endorsements were done for hard work and usually <coughs> the base of the, of, the, of the social media campaign that we had developed. Okay? We provided every single celebrity with the links to the campaign to show them the support that was happening on the ground. All right? And all the resulting publicity that came out of the press on TV which generated either from myself or Veronica's email or something like that. So I'm asking people, hey, we have an issue here. Um, and you might be a socialist, but you might, you might, like, you might like Noam Chomsky. Right? You might like Alex Ferguson. And that is a way of opening up and making it more accessible to, um, to your wider audience. Right? So we, we, we use these endorsements the same way brands use celebrity endorsements for their products, alright? If you can relate to these people, then there's a possibility that you might be able to relate, relate to the new cortex workers in the factory, alright? I'm sorry, you know, I'm kind of rushing through it as much as I can, because 